I had a principal once who was very fond of the phrase, there's no such thing as a problem, only opportunities. And I'm going to take that message to heart today because I recorded a bunch of videos yesterday dealing with XP grading and apparently I forgot all the audio. Uh, this is my first lesson in vlogging, so uh, I'm going to take that as an opportunity uh, to try to do a better job today. Uh, in the last video, I wore a t-shirt. Today, I'm wearing a tie and a jacket. So, uh, m bigger production values here already. Um, I wanted to start first by saying a couple of things about XP grading. The first is that it's not for everybody. Um, there is a, a bit of a dispute, even in the gamification community, about the, the value of XP grading. And some people believe that a, a, a game is a voluntary option and that if you're going to have a game in the classroom, it should be voluntary. And therefore, if you're giving out XP, uh, if it's part of a grade, then the experience points, the XP are not uh, voluntary, therefore it's not really a game. Um, I try to find ways around this by not having XP be the only system whereby students are incentivized. Uh, so the XP is going to be uh, a big part of my game, uh, but it is not the only part of my game. The second part about XP grading is that uh, sometimes Gamify teachers will want to give XP as a way to incentivize non-academic behaviors. So for example, uh, if I have a permission slip that I want a student to sign, uh, some teachers might want to give XP for that. And that is a, a non-academic thing, meaning it's a behavioral behavioral issue. Uh, you're trying to encourage a certain behavior. Maybe it's uh, not getting a detention. Maybe it's uh, not using the restroom at inappropriate times. Those are behavioral and the, they should be incentivized. Uh, but if you're using an XP grading system, uh, the XP doesn't work for that. You don't want to give XP bonuses for things that don't relate to the, the, the academic expectations, the, the skills and content that you want to see demonstrated. Uh, and that's fair. And the way that I incentivize that in my classes, I have an alternative currency system. So uh, students earn silver instead of XP, uh, which is a way to, to get around that problem. Now, my philosophy on the grading is that uh, grades should be a demonstration of skills or content, right? So when I am building my XP grading system, I want my grades to reflect progress throughout the class, which ideally isn't that what grades are supposed to be. Uh, they're supposed to demonstrate the progression and growth of a student from the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year. And that leads to a couple of problems with traditional grading. In a traditional grade, uh, let's say we're talking about category weighted systems. And in some schools, uh, for example, my district requires that we have certain category weights. Uh, they're, they don't really correspond to anything on a rubric. Uh, it's major assessments, mid-level assessments, and, and practice, uh, and it's 50, 30, 20. Uh, and there are grade books like uh, we use PowerSchool, uh, which requires we use that weighted category system. Uh, I get around that a little bit because I'm a dual enrollment teacher, which means technically I'm uh, also teaching college-level uh, classes. Uh, my school's a little different. We, we don't take gifted and talented. Uh, students. We only take kind of what we call the middle quartile, uh, but because I'm teaching the college level class, I, I can kind of get around the, the power school requirements. And I'm going to show you how I get around uh, sort of the weighted categories as well in my, my XP system. Uh, they're present, but they're not the focus. Uh, in a traditional weighted uh, category uh, system, uh, the traditional grades are confusing to students. Uh, I mean, it's a math problem more than it is a reflection of where they are in the class and uh, it obfuscates their their progression and growth. Uh, parents, the students, even the teacher sometimes doesn't really uh, know what the, the grade is reflecting. Uh, if you get a 100 on the, the homework category that might be 10 percent but you got a 70 in the the, the testing uh, category but that's uh, 50 percent. Uh, there's a lot of numbers being thrown around there and in the XP system uh, one XP is worth one XP is worth one XP, regardless of where it is fitting in. So it's a lot easier to plan out and strategize uh, when you're uh, a student trying to figure out how you want to get your A. The other problem with traditional weighted systems, or even traditional point systems, which I'll talk about in a second, is that um, that 
The other problem in a traditional weighted system, sorry about the, the break there, is that uh, students get frustrated when they see their grade going down, even when they get a good grade. Uh, for example, a student takes a quiz on the first day and they get a 100 on the quiz. It's uh, some uh, assignment test in their prior knowledge and they, they did really well on it. They get a 100 in the quiz category. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that they know 100% of the information that they're going to need to demonstrate throughout the whole year. What it means is they did well on the first exam. And that means that they have a 100 average at the beginning of the year. But let's say they get to the end of that unit and they've maintained that 100 quiz and homework average. Uh, they've done really well completing assignments, so they have a 100 and everything until they get to the test and they get a 92 on the test, which is an A in my route, in my district. But their grade still goes down to about a 95. So they've done really well. They've done really well on the exam and they still see their grade going down. The great part about XP grading is that that grade always goes up. See, because in my XP system, and this is based on Lee Sheldon and his multiplayer classroom, uh, it's different than what he's explaining, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about how it's different, but a grade starts at zero when they walk in. Because if you think about this like uh, a role-playing game, right? In a role-playing game, a student or a player in a role-playing game enters the game having demonstrated no skill or mastery of any of the content skills. Uh, they don't know how to cast spells. They don't know how to fight monsters. Uh, maybe they know how from a previous game, but they haven't demonstrated their ability at all in this game. So just like that, a student might walk into my room knowing a good chunk of U.S. history, but they haven't shown me, they haven't demonstrated their abilities. So I'm going to put them to the test. I'm going to uh, ask them to show and demonstrate their mastery of these, these skills and content objectives. So they start off with a zero. And as they demonstrate these skills, and as they show me that they know the content, they're going to earn experience points, which will then build up to uh, whatever level it is that they want to get to. Now, in most XP systems, the students will uh, try to get up to a level. So uh, 100 XP might be level 1, 200 might be level 2, and so on. In my room, what I attempt to do is set the bar at 10,000 experience points. That is a 100 for my class. Now I do that for a couple of reasons. I set that bar at 10,000 experience points as a 100 overall because it's easy math for the students. Essentially, uh, they just divide whatever their XP count is by 100 and that gives them their rough number average. Uh, for our level grade. So if they get 8,400 XP, uh, they divide that by 100 and they have an 84 roughly in the class um, because they're trying to get up to that one, one, uh, 10,000 mark. Uh, it also makes some of the math calculations easier because we are on a 10 point scale in South Carolina. Uh, so 90% of 10,000 would be 9,000. 80% of 10,000 is uh, 8,000. So the students kind of generally can tell where they are uh, in relation to that, that numeric scale. Now, the uh, important part about the XP grading is that it's always showing students that they're progressing through the class, right? It's, it's philosophically, that's where I, I want the students to see our grades is uh, demonstrating their growth. So they start off at zero and their grade is always going to go up. Okay, so everything that they do in the class that's academic, uh, if they um, uh, if they are uh, taking, a, uh, I call them boss battles, but if they take a quiz, uh, the quiz will show that they know some information, so they are demonstrating their content knowledge. If they uh, are creating some sort of a, a National History Day project that they've put a lot of time and effort into, uh, they're going to get more XP because they've demonstrated they understand that content and that they've learned some of the skills that are necessary towards building that project. So everything is showing their growth and progress uh, throughout the year. So that when they see that number of, of 7,000 experience points out of 10,000, they know that they've gotten roughly about 70% of uh, what I want them to demonstrate uh, demonstrated. And hopefully by the end of the semester, they're up near 10,000 because that means that they've fully demonstrated uh, what I need them to demonstrate uh, to show that they've mastered a good chunk of what I expect in the class. Now, there's two things that I need to, to put on as caveats here. Uh, because I'm required in the high school role to have a 20% overall final uh, exam, um, the, this, this XP grade, this, this sometimes I call it the level grade, uh, only counts towards 80% of their overall grade. The other 20% is their final exam. Uh, so that's one way that their uh, grade might go down. Everything else is going up. 
The only other time that I might uh, bump their grade is if they get caught plagiarizing. That's a big deal in, uh, you, in, in history. Uh, if you are plagiarizing using somebody else's words, uh, just cut and pasting uh, as your own. Uh, if I find that out later, I will remove the XP that they uh, earned. Um, this is just my uh, philosophy, and this is sort of my overview of XP grading. Uh, I am going to have a second video here in just a minute uh, where I will talk specifically about my gradebook and how I set that up uh, so that I can maximize the student's uh, advantages.